police have advised that uh, Mr. Carmel Darwish died immediately upon being shot at uh, approximately 1.44 p.m. My client, Mr. Zuhir Darwish, arrived shortly after the shooting because he had already planned to meet his brother there. The police acknowledged that a phone call was made to uh, Mr. Carmel Darwish's sister-in-law with a duration of uh, 197 seconds at 2.05 p.m., i.e. 20 minutes after the police say Mr. Carmel Darwish died. In addition, there was an outgoing call made from an application on Mr. Carmel Darwish's phone at 2.05 uh, p.m. And at 2.06 p.m., the message was sent from that same app, which was a love heart emoji uh, sent to his wife. There is an obvious issue here, Your Honour, as to whether Mr. Carmel Darwish was in fact alive in the mosque after the time that the police believed he was dead. And this is highly relevant, Your Honour, because he was left in the mosque until the following day. Mr. Darwish went to the hospital believing that his brother might be there. While there, he spoke to the police um, between 20 and 30 times. Every time he saw somebody walk past, he spoke to them and said, um, my brother's phone is being answered. I believe he's alive. I can't find him. My client went to the, back to the al -Nur Mosque and told the police that his brother had been answering the phone and could still be alive within. At that point, he was placed in the back of a police car and threatened with arrest if he did not calm down. It is a very traumatic situation for my client, Mr. Darwish, to be in, and it has traumatised him significantly uh, since this event. The concept that uh, he was unable to help his brother and that he may in fact have been alive.